Laura Wigan. Again, she is the manager for oncology services for Maine General Medical Center. And she is here today to talk to us how data can help us talk about low dose lung cancer screenings. So Barbara, I'm gonna turn that to you. Great, um, so you can go to the next slide. Um, so, uh, so I am the manager of oncology services and one of those areas that um, I recently uh, expanded to is cancer registry. Um, so what I um, what we found that has been impactive um, for talking about lung cancer screenings is to kind of start at the the big view of um, what cancer looks like for the state of Maine um, in terms of the rest of the country. Um, so we found um, a lot of this data kind of to be impactful for not only our leaders um, at Maine General but also um, physicians because. Um, they don't necessarily get to see the cancer registry data one-on-one -on -one, or, of course, you know, they have so much on their plates, um, especially our primary care and that type of thing. Um, we really, um, we really like to bring this um, data to them. I think the other thing I wanted to share before we get into the presentation is just, um, you know, I know this is what kind of we've looked at. Um, I'm really excited about this um, learning group because I know other folks have um, found other ways to look at data and express it in ways too. So. I'm just excited to hear about what other folks are, are doing too to kind of engage our community. Um, so this slide um, basically is from um, the, the National Cancer Registry. Um, you can locate it on the CDC um, and get to everything. Oh, can, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, so what this shows is that um, Maine is ranked number five um, in terms of our rate of cancer um, across the country. So you know, we're, we're very high up there um, and this, um, you can go to the next slide now. And then what also we also share is that in terms of, um, you know, how, um, how we compare for breast cancer patients because breast and lung, I don't know if many of you kind of, the numbers are usually pretty close, um, but we're actually ranked number 29th in terms of um, breast cancer cases, cases um, across the nation. Um, so next slide. So the other piece that we, um, we like to share is, you know, that our um, survival rate um, is still um, not um, very high. We're um, ranked at number 11th um, compared to the rest of the United States. And also just to point out that, of course, um, the five-year relative survival is 19.1%. Next slide. So um, what we've done is we've tried to compare that um, to, to breast because, um, you know, breast and lung both have um, screening options right now. And you can see in the state of Maine, um, we're actually really ranked very, very high, which is something to be just extremely proud of as a state. I think all of us, um, you know, work kind of in both realms um, in terms of taking care of patients um, with cancer um, or we see it. So um, 42, and if you can see this green line, um, uh, right there, that's the national average, and we're above the national average in taking care of our, our breast patients. So we actually um, have a higher survival rate than most of the United States um, on breast, and um, of course you can see the five-year relative survival is 89% um, for breast, which is fabulous. Okay, so I think you know where we're going at with this. So next slide. <laughs> So this is um, a slide that um, we pulled off of the same site. You can pull a ton of information, you know, whatever engages um, kind of your community, but um, this shows um, incident rates across the country for lung cancer. Um, so it is interesting. Um, we kind of just throw it out there for food for thought, but you can see that um, Maine, of course, is, um, is very high. We already know that. And then you have kind of that region um, in the middle there, but then it's, it's interesting to note that kind of out to the <laughs> out to the west, uh, they don't have as high incidence. So um, just we just like to throw it out there that that information's out there. Um, next slide. So this is how um, we kind of show how we've grown. Um, so we do track um, through our um, financial system um, our lung screening um, month by month, and um, which you know it's just kind of exciting to share. Um, how many people have come on board over time. Next slide. And then this is the slide that I really, um, I really, really love because we started off in 2015 with a, a soft, soft start and um, really focusing on lung cancer and catching it on stage one. 
Um, so you can see that, um, you know, lung screening and having um, just more engagement over um, trying to catch lung cancer at stage one, um, we've been able to impact it um, fairly well. Um, I would say, you know, having, you know, 39 to um, to 66 patients, you know, those are patients that all, um, as we very well know, if they were caught at stage three or four, would have a very low survival rate, and um, that's just a huge win. So this data comes from um, our own our own personal cancer registry data um, for Maine General, and your cancer registrars um, can pull this for you um, fairly easily um, if you want to look at it and track it. Um, so the next slide. And this is what we use um, when we're talking um, kind of with um, people in the community um, in terms of uh, um, PCPs and maybe um, different, um, like we've brought this to our um, health reach people. And that is, is that, you know, breast cancer, we do phenomenal. And I'm sure all of your cancer registries probably look the same. And um, our message is, you know, Yes, we know that lung cancer has its challenges and the screening is um, limited to people that are smoking at a high smoking rate, um, but look what we do with breast and if we can screen as effectively, even if it is, of course, just for the restrictions of patients with those um, pack years, we can move the bar, um, you know, from stage four to stage one. We do that very successfully in breast. We see it in our national registries. We're one of the best in the nation in terms of taking care of patients. So that's kind of, um, you know, that's kind of what we use as uh, the push goal. Like let's <laughs> let's get lung cancer um, as close as we can to how well we do um, with breast cancer if possible. So um, next slide. So this is kind of interesting. Um, this is just how we use different data sets. Um, we actually use this from our um, ACR lung screening registry, and it it helped us see the impact of um, going out and doing lunch and learns to all of the practices that are within um, our um, service area. So it's a little bit tedious uh, because you have to take all the physicians and put them in the the practice. So it <laughs> it looks like a nice graph, but it it is quite a bit of work to put together. But um, it is a good way to kind of see which practices maybe do we need to to focus a little bit more on um, and maybe re-educate and that type of thing. So in 2016, of course, we didn't um, have any outreach. And then we did, uh, or I should say we did, the thoracic surgeons and our pulmonologists and our nurse navigator went out to every practice um, in our service area and um, talked to them about lung screenings. And that's when we saw um, the biggest increase. So. We should probably do this again, um, just to kind of see um, where we're at and where um, where folks are. So, <laughs> but good way to use our um, ACR registry data. Next slide. So this is one of um, our favorite slides. Uh, this actually came from our thoracic surgeon, uh, Dr. Blank, and um, it just it's um, I have the link in the presentation for where you can actually get the the data behind it, but. Um, we use this when we're talking to um, providers about um, the effectiveness, because we all know that, you know, um, colon screenings, we don't even think twice about doing them. Uh, breast cancer screenings, we don't think twice about doing them. Um, but you actually have a, a better chance of preventing a cancer death um, with lung screening, because the data shows that it's only about 320 um, lung screenings where you catch somebody that could have um, possibly had a bad outcome. Um, so that's really been um, huge. It's definitely something that um, uh, we bring to us. I think even our nurse navigator like uses it as her fax cover sheet <laughs> just to remind, uh, remind folks um, about this, this great statistic. And if you look at your um, ACR registry data, you can almost see the the comparison um, once you start the screenings, um, we are right about um, at the like one one positive per 300 screening. So it's kind of it's interesting to compare that too. So um, next slide. So this is another thing um, that we like to use to track um, and talk to our um, 
our groups about, and it's just that, you know, um, the importance of smoking sensation and how successful your team is at um, not only trying to catch cancer at um, stage one, but also at incorporating smoking sensation. We know it's a huge part of, um, you know, what we're doing and what we're trying to um, prevent for the future. So um, this is something else that we do track to make sure that um, providers know um, that we're not only trying to screen patients, but also reaching out to them when they have their screening um, and talking to them, hey, do you want to, if they're still a smoker, do you want to talk about um, smoking sensation? We have a community health worker that um, will meet with them and um, make sure that they know that there's resources and that type of thing. And we found, um, we found letting folks know that this is happening also is really engaging um, because, um, you know, it's not just about the screening. It's also about um, trying to help folks um, quit smoking. So next slide. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that was pretty quick. <laughs> well, let's see, it's 1219. So about right on time. <laughs> it's perfect. It's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just want to open it up. Does anybody have any specific questions for Barbara before we move on to the next um, segment? 